Good morning. Happy Ooh, Sunday to you. Looks good. Oh yeah, we're not as not as pale. Don't go to the nine. Don't. I mean, go to it just for reference. So you gotta put sunglasses on though if you're gonna um, go watch back the pale. other one because uh, yeah, you know, a little shiny. But we're hey, working glad. on our tan, okay? What? I said we're working on our tan. It's still spring. There's plenty yeah, of time. Yeah, we got plenty of time. It's all good. Glad that you guys are here Who joining are with us. We are Adam and Morgan, your online host today. Glad that you're tuning in to the online lobby, which is what this is here at Freedom House. The lobby, the digital lobby. The digital lobby. Yes, and so you said the ways? No, we I haven't said. Okay, so we have different ways that you are connecting with us right now. We want to make sure all, we hit everybody that's tuning in, whether you're joining us I was from one say of these it. three. Thank you. All right, Facebook. I always want to say Instagram. It's not. Don't it's say not it. It's not on Instagram. YouTube and our website. Boom. Boom. Freemouse.cc um, slash live. All of those have a chat function, and yeah. we want to hear from you. We want to hear where you're tuning in from. Yeah, so if you're watching say on hey YouTube on your TV, you know what? Guess what? They make an app. You can go there, too, and be like, hey, I'm watching in my living room, but I'm chatting off my phone. Yeah. We would love to chat with That's you. That's what we want to hear, because we, this is supposed to be the lobby. It's supposed to be a two-way It is. It is the lobby. So we're either going to chat with each other or we're going to chat with you, which we want to do. There were people from Thailand last yeah. service. Crazy. <laughs> that You know what? Have you ever had Thai food? I think so. I think I have too because no. Okay, no. I don't know if I have actually. Anyways, I've had, when I was younger, my dad and I would go to a great Vietnamese restaurant. Ooh, it was yeah. veggie heavy. It was so good. Pho. And you would, my dad would get pho. And I would probably get like, I think I got like this, um noodle brothy somehow we always Sounds end up like back pho. at food what, I know, what time I'm very it is hungry. there oh yeah it's like I'm middle gonna look of the night up. probably wait i'm going to look it up cuz if if uh hawaii is 6 hours behind us time in, in hold on time it's probably i my guess don't t- don't say yet my guess is that in thailand right now it is shocking like it's a shocking time frame like 10 p.m. yesterday Ooh, I don't know about the yesterday versus today thing, but it's, oh, 10, it's, it's, it's 11, 10 p.m. Though. It's 11, though. No, it's 10 p.m. today. Oh, so they're ahead of us. I guess. So it's, it's 10 p.m. on so Sunday. So it's, it's tonight in Thailand. <laughs> that almost I'm confused. Um, if you're in Where Thailand, say hello. Where's the all this stuff? Anyways, glad you're tuning also, in. Also, how cool is that they were from. watching at, like, 8 p.m. They were getting their night Sunday service Sunday night on. service? Yeah, that's cool. Anyways, um, tell us up. where you're tuning in from, because you may not be in Thailand. You might be in Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Texas. Awesome. Well, wherever you are, there. we're glad that you're here. I have a quick question to kind of get the uh, get a little bit of understanding. Is it about Tyler, Texas? No, it's not about Tyler, Texas. But it's about traveling there, isn't it? It's about Look travel. So uh, I was talking to some people today that they're about to go on a trip this week. And the question is, if you're going to go on a trip, we're talking like five days. It's a decent five amount Five-day trip. A, like away. Noted. When are you packing? Yeah. Are you a... We're I'm very sorry, different. two weeks in advance, I'm, I'm packing, I'm getting the suitcase ready. Or are you like a two hours before we leave? Some night people ain't even two packer. hours. Some people are like, oh, yeah, let me go grab my bag and start throwing stuff in there. Just be like, just throw stuff I can't stuff be doing in. that. Okay, so we're very different. We are very different. So she He's will, last minute. <laughs> I'm last minute. It's one because I'm wearing the clothes that I'm going to be wearing on the trip. Um, what? And, yeah. Probably. Like, throughout the week, I'm going to be... I get it, like, but, the like... The leading up, I'm going to be wearing the clothes I'm going to be wearing But go ahead, describe me. Anyway, so she will be preparing in advance, getting her outfits together. She'll try them on fully. I'm like... Yeah, if I'm going for five clean. days, this I need to know clean. that I have options. I need to know that, oh, I brought the right shoes because this pair she of pants fits better with, with that them. shirt. I do take photos. But then The she's photo last thing only really ha- no, if it's five days, I'm taking photos. It really doesn't matter where I'm going. Yeah. I heard this comedian one time where he's like, yeah, I because stopped picking I out my know. clothes. He said, my wife picks out all my clothes for me, but he, she labels them like B6 for a shirt, C7 for a pair of pants. He's like, I'm playing a bad game of bingo over here. Okay, I don't do that. I don't do that, but I do take photos. Like, I'll lay out. Yeah, Wait, remember when we yeah, went to Florida yeah, and it, it was like it a week? I was, I, like, say. I was like, this shirt, these pants. Because when you're there, especially if you're on a schedule, like we had, uh, remember when we went to Florida, yeah, we had, it was like, like you had stuff we had to go to. And, like, yeah, I'm like, anybody got time we to be hitting? sitting there and be like, this looks cute, this doesn't. I was like, no. The pictures were helpful. I do not enjoy swapping out clothes that much, though. He hates trying. I make him try them on, though, in advance. I just hold it up. I'm like, can I see with that? He hates that. Anyways. I'll be like having her help me pick out an outfit or something. I'll be like, hey, does this work? So you need to put it on. I'm like, like put it on. I want fun. to. Just <laughs> I know. Look at it. <laughs> okay, wives, is that a thing for you? Yeah, you can throw that in the chat. But it takes two because she's also like 
I'm last minute on the packing. She's last minute on wanting the house clean. Yeah. So we're well, like we, leaving to go out the door. She's like, quick, let's do the I'm dishes. Like, dishes? I'm like, we need on, to take the leaving. trash out. <laughs> uh, spray my little room spray. Like, Anyways, we gotta go. Digress. Speaking of, we gotta go. We got 10 seconds still service. It's this service be is amazing. Beautiful. Pastor awesome Diane day. is in the house. We're continuing our series by His Stripes, and we got a really cool announcement and generosity that we're personally really excited about. So Glad stay you're here. tuned. Enjoy service. Freedom House. What a beautiful day to be in God's house, giving Him the glory. Do His name. Let's sing with one voice. Come on, y'all. We're gonna open some prison doors today in the name of Jesus. God of praise opens prison doors. We'll sing from sunset to sunrise. And if worship makes these walls come down, we'll sing from morning till midnight. Yeah, we'll sing from morning till midnight. Come on, church, lift your voice. All day, sing all night. Our hearts lifted up, arms are open wide. God, we know what you can do when we lift up our voices in worship. You. This is what's gonna happen, y'all. Praise up, it's prison time. God is praise, makes them. is it that in the quiet of our hearts, just with our posture of our hearts, that we can enter in to the quiet, intimate, secret places with God. And we can do that because Jesus is the access. He made a way for us to walk right in 
to the throne room. So as we sing this next song, y'all, this is your invitation to get quiet with the Lord, to speak with him, and to listen to him. There's power in the unity of our voices. Take me into your secret place Where I'm constantly amazed Get this picture Where the saints and angels bow before you There's nothing like your presence in Just a glimpse of heaven magnificent he is, the holy God that would consider us worthy enough 
to die for us, that would consider us worthy enough to bring us into relationship with Him even though we are sinners. Holy enough to bestow grace upon us when we didn't deserve it. Mercy when we didn't deserve it. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we declare and thank you for your holiness. Jesus, we declare that we are made righteous in you. And we're so thankful that we get to be in the presence of a holy God in all of our filthiness, in all of our sin. And we thank you, Jesus, that you would give us grace and mercy and righteousness in place of our sin. God, we just are in awe of you. And we take a moment to recognize what you have done for us, how you brought us into right relationship with you, regardless of where we came from. We get to stand in your presence today. We get to honor you today. We get to glorify you today. We get to receive from you today. We get to be part of your family. We're so thankful. We love you, Jesus. You know, when I was 23 years old, I walked into a church and my life was in shambles. It was a mess. I needed cleaned up, but he met me right where I was. He connected with me and he let me know that his grace was sufficient for me, that he had so many great things in store for me, that he had a life that I hadn't even thought, asked, or imagined for, something that I'd never seen before. All I could see was my own sin. All I could see was my own filthiness. All I could see was my own mess. But Jesus came and he cleaned it up. He cleaned me up. And he specializes in that today. And he healed my life. And that's the part that I want to get to. He healed my life. And today, you're going to hear a healing message. And you get to receive his healing today. That's right. I want our leaders to go ahead and come forward and get ready for prayer. Every week, we like to open it up. So if you guys need prayer for anything, you guys can come and receive that prayer. You know, I'm just thinking about this healing, the whole process, and sometimes I think our own minds get in our way. You know, we get this mindset that I'm good enough, God. I don't need you to be involved in this. I can handle it on my own. So our pride and our arrogance get in the way of what God really wants to do in our lives. Or maybe it's just the opposite. It's our weakness. Maybe it's our worry, our fear. Maybe it's even past experiences that keep us from feeling worthy enough to even come to God the Father and ask. I don't know what it is for you today, but I can, can I tell you, it's not your greatness that put him on the throne. It's not your weakness that took him off the throne. It's not my greatness, my weakness. No, no, no. God is God. And we're all broken people yeah. in need of a Savior. And today, here's the three things I want you to do. I want you to ask God to reveal what it is that's keeping you in bondage. What is it, what's keeping you back from experiencing everything that he has for you? Is it pride, is it arrogance, is it bitterness, is it anger? Is it hurts from your past? Is it worry, is it fear? What is it? that you need to be revealed in your life, then I want you to come up front and I want you to release that. Pray with one of these leaders, release that to God, and then I want you to receive what he has for you. So reveal, God. Reveal right now in our lives what it is that's holding us back from receiving everything you have for us, God. Maybe it's faith, a lack of it, Maybe it's our fear. Lord, I pray that you help us with our unbelief. Reveal to us right now, God, in our hearts, in our minds, what it is that you want to do in our lives and what you want to take off of the weight that's been we've been carrying for so long, that weight we want to relieve it. So God, we bring that to you this morning in this moment of prayer. And we receive what it is that you have for us, God. We do all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we continue to worship, come forward, get prayer.
Give those things to God and watch what he'll do in your life. Would you close your eyes for a moment? If you need prayer, you definitely can come up here.
know you guys got it. Because I'm reading the posture of the room, and the posture of the room does, say, does not say that anything is possible. It does not say that. The posture is maybe, 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 maybe. I think we need to turn the posture around in this room. Because maybe you weren't here last service, but I was, and I know what God can do. And the same God that was here last service is here this service, and we need to stir it up a little bit. I'm tired of people putting God in a box. I've seen lives miraculously healed. I've seen families come back together. I've seen finances miraculously blow up. I've seen all kinds of great things happen because he's the God of miracles, and anything is possible. Through here, down to here, and raise your hands and receive it today. Get your posture right. Get your hands up. Give it give some praise today. remind ourselves the promises of God. Sometimes we just got to get in the house and have our, our brothers and sisters hold our arms up. You are in the right place today. He is more than able. Can we say that together? Can we say you are more than able? Come on. You are more than able. One more time. You are more than able. And Jesus, we are ready for what you want to do today. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you are new with us, welcome to Freedom House. Welcome home. We're so glad that you are here worshiping with us today. Our senior pastors actually have a special welcome just for you. So before you have a seat, turn to your left and your right and tell someone your name, and then you can turn your attention toward the screens. We are Troy and Penny Maxwell, your senior pastors right here at Freedom House. Our mission here is to equip people to experience Christ's freedom in their everyday lives. We are one house with many rooms. So welcome to everyone at our Central, South End, and Lake Norman campuses. And also to those of you who are watching through our online experience at our online campus. And if today is your first time here, we are fired up to have you with us. We'd love to get to know you, so tap the button on the back of the seat in front of you with your phone and follow the prompts on the screen. Then stop by Guest Central after service because we've set aside a special gift just for you. So here's a look at what's coming up here at Freedom House. Water baptism is an outward expression of an inward commitment to follow Jesus. And we wanna celebrate you being made free through baptism. 
Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we are made free. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus, this is your personal invitation to make a public declaration through water baptism and begin to walk in the new life you've been given through Jesus. Baptisms are next Sunday at Central Campus, so don't wait another minute to be made free and register today at freedomhouse.cc baptism. This spring, we are setting the table for those who are new to the church and ready to make Freedom House home. Our next Get On Track membership lunch is on Sunday, May 5th, right after second service at all campuses. Come enjoy lunch with our campus pastors and leadership team as we share the history and vision of Freedom House. This is your opportunity to connect, grow, and hear about how you can use your gifts to serve in God's house. Head on over to freedomhouse.cc slash membership to RSVP, and we'll see you May 5th. Hey guys, May the 4th is our next strong breakfast, and I cannot wait. One of my best friends, Pastor Marcus Meekum from Seven Hills Church in Ohio will be with us. He will bring an amazing word to lift all of us men up, take us to the next level. You know, we only bring the best to speak here at Freedom House. So get ready to be challenged, build community, and be the man God has called you to be. So I want you to go to freedomhouse.cc slash strong. I want you to buy a ticket for yourself. I want you to buy a ticket for your friend. I want you to buy a ticket for your dad, your brother, your coworker, your enemy. Buy a ticket for everybody. Bring them. Register right now. We'll see you May the 4th. For all of this and more, tap the button on the back of the seat in front of you with your phone or download the Freedom House app. Well, hello, Freedom House. It is so, isn't that worship wonderful to be in God's presence like that? I just love it. Well, hey, if I've not met you, my name is Michael Ott. I serve on our FH Kids team here. And right now in this moment, we want to continue with our worship by honoring God with our finances as we receive tithes and offering. See, a tithe is what? It's the first 10% of our gross income that God asks us to return to Him. And an offering, that's any amount that we commit to give that is over and above the tithe. Now, here at Freedom House, we try to make giving very, very easy. In fact, it's actually getting easier because all you have to do now is pull out your phone, unlock it, and you can tap that decal that's right there on the seat right in front of you, and boom, you're ready to give. If you want to use a giving envelope, those are also in front of you. If you want to use cash or check, you can give by putting that into that envelope, and you're going to put that in the giving boxes that are located out in the lobby after service. Now, here at Freedom House, once a year, we like to take up a one-time special offering that we call Liberty. And you see, it's during that time that we come together for Liberty as a church family, where we we believe, we pray, we, we give big, injecting funds into several different areas of the ministry to help bridge the gap between where we currently are and we see where God is taking us. You see, it's through our Liberty offering that we actually accelerate the vision, and this year through four key initiatives or objectives. The first one is this, and that is to purchase a 15-passenger van. And that van's going to allow us to transport our youth that are in the Lake Norman area. Yeah, those those 7th grade to 12th grade students, they don't have an opportunity, but they are going to now because, you see, they're going to be able to come here on Sunday nights to enjoy the vertical youth service. That's the purpose there. The second one is that we're going to buy a sound system for our soon-coming South Charlotte campus. Yeah, come on. The third one is that to purchase and install a motorized gate for our South End campus. And the final and the last one is to have a first-class playground for our Freedom Academy kids. Amen? Man, that's some good, great stuff. And I'll tell you what, that's pretty exciting. But I even have greater and exciting news for you this morning because I'm able to give you an update on a couple of those objectives as we are now nearing the end of our commitment period. So... Two of those objectives, here we go. The first one is this, regarding the motorized gate down there at South End. To purchase and to install that, we're looking at roughly $10,000. Well, guess what? Cross it off the list. It's a done deal. It's already been taken care of. Okay, one down, three to go. All right, here's another one. 
the 15 passenger van. It was purchased on Friday, this past Friday, man. Come on, give it up. In fact, look at, we got a video there. You can see where they're actually picking it up. They're able to drive that off the lot. You know what you're looking at, Freedom House? You're looking at your generosity. These things are happening right in front of your face. Why? Because you are faithful to give in a very, very big way. Absolutely amazing and so very exciting. But here's something else I want to do. I want to bring you up to date as to what's come in and what we're also still believing for. You see, Freedom House, because of your generosity, get a load of this. You've given a total of $175,196. Come on. Our vertical youth group, you had a car wash. You were able to contribute $1,300. That's right, awesome. And then many of us took advantage of the 30-day commitment period where we've committed $42,994 to for this vision. Now, that leaves us with a little bit over $90,100 that we're still believing God for. But you know what, Freedom House? With the faith that is in this room, there is nothing impossible for God. And we can do this. How many of you are with me? Can we do this? Our God can do this. This is small beans for him. We just need to be that open vessel to obey. Amen. All right, so here's, here's the thing. We took the offering back on March 17th last month. That's when we received our Liberty offering. And we also extended a 30-day commitment per period to give people time to get their funds together to give into this vision. Because we know many of you were waiting for maybe a, a tax return, for something to sell, or, or maybe even a bonus. And see, we want to encourage you to whatever God has placed in your heart to be faithful to follow through with that. And we also want to remind you that this coming Tuesday, it's the actual end of the 30-day commitment. Understand this. One, we're standing with you. We're believing and right behind you. And we're cheering you on so that you can finish your commitment strong. Now, I don't know about you, but man, this is pretty exciting stuff that's going on in here at Freedom House. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about it and you're saying, wow, I think I missed it back in March. No, there's still opportunity for you right here and right now. As I said before, we're still believing God for the $90,100, and this is where you can come in big for God. And so all you have to do, like we said earlier, take out your phone, unlock it, tap that decal on the seat in front of you, and you can begin to give right here and now. Or if you prefer, you can actually go to our website, freedomhouse.cc slash liberty, and you can give there as well. As I'm closing, I just want to share a little something from my heart, and that is this. I've had the blessed privilege and honor every once in a while to come on this platform and to share generosity with you. But it never ceases amazes me, Freedom House, at how generous you are. Whether it is a crisis, you step up to the plate. Whether it's an opportunity, a vision, you step up for the plate. And you continually open your heart to be generous and allow God to work through you. I mean that very seriously. And I say it from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure for this entire ministry, we say thank you, Thank you, thank you. You see, because it's your fault that families, children, and youth, and adults are being impacted with the kingdom of God. Yeah, you're to blame for that, and that's a good one. Hallelujah. That kind of puts a little twist on it for you right there. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we are just so grateful for what you're doing in this house. I thank you that we're led with leaders that have vision vision that we can believe for and be a part of and watch you move on our behalf. Father, we're excited for what you're going to do through each and every one of us from the young to the very old. We're excited about being a part of what you're doing to reach and change lives because that's what it's all about. So today, Father, we faithfully bring our tithe, our offering to you. We say here, Lord, we gladly with joyful hearts and expectation of great things we give these things to you to bring glory and honor to your name, to your name. Let it be said and heard all through the city, the Lord Jesus is Lord of Charlotte. And we thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name I pray, and everybody said, amen. Well, thank you, Freedom House. Enjoy the rest of the service. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, 
smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. What is up, Freedom House? Great to see you guys today. If I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, my name is Diana Henderson, and my husband and I hail from our South End campus, way down in the dirty South, as we like to say. Anybody ever been far down to the dirty South? Okay, a few of you, all right. Well, great, well, we're one house with many rooms here at Freedom House. In addition to Central, where you are, South and where I'm from, we also have our Lake Norman campus, and we have an online campus. So if you're ever traveling, don't be missing church, because we live stream our services every weekend. In fact, we've got our online family joining us today. We've got people from Hungary, El Salvador, Italy, Canada, Oregon, Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia, Georgia, Michigan, Florida, and the great state of California. Come on, somebody. Welcome to our online family. Glad that you guys are with us today. We do things a little differently here at Freedom House. You've probably noticed that every weekend we have a different communicator on the platform. That's not an accident. That's on purpose. That's a vision that God gave to our church, to Freedom House. And what I think is so cool about that is it's different than any other church does it that I know of in the U.S., it's a vision that God gave to our senior pastors, Troy and Penny Maxwell, and they faithfully breathe that into fruition. It's not easy to share your platform, but they do it every single weekend. Can we give honor where honor is due? <laughs> Pastor Troy and Penny Maxwell, love them dearly. All right, guys, we have been in a series this month called By His Stripes, and we're talking all about what the Bible says about sickness and disease, and most importantly, healing. Now, in this series, we're going to be unpacking all of those difficult questions that you likely have about healing. Questions like, is healing for everyone? Does healing, miraculous healing, still happen today? Where does sickness come from? Why am I still dealing with sickness. We're going to unpack all of those questions in this series. So I want to encourage you, make sure that you're coming to church every weekend so that you're learning and truly understanding what the Bible has to say. Now, I first want to make something very clear. Sickness does not come from God. Thank you. I didn't even have to ask for an amen. I'm getting it voluntarily. Sickness does not come from God. In fact, it was not in the Garden of Eden to begin with. It wasn't until Adam and Eve disobeyed that sin came on the scene, and then we've been in a fallen world ever since. It's this epic battle that we face. It's part of the curse from the disobedience in the garden. Diabetes, the common cold, cancer, none of it comes from God. And we're going to be going deeper to understand what the Bible has to say about healing. Now, this topic is especially near and dear to my heart. And today, I want to talk specifically about the ways and the methods in which God heals. The ways and the methods in which God heals. The reason I'm so passionate about this, 13 years ago, God radically healed my son in utero. He was diagnosed with a heart condition, and they told us that he was likely to have Down syndrome. Now, when we got that diagnosis, we were like, no, sir. My Bible says that we are healed, and we are not going to accept that for our son. However, I will tell you, there was so much that we didn't fully understand about healing. And so God took us on a journey, a process of understanding healing for us to fully grasp it. You know, sometimes things are here 
but they're not yet here. Sometimes we, we know what the word of God says, but we've not yet fully grasped what the word of God says here. I liken it to an insurance policy. You know, you're, you've got insurance, but maybe you don't fully understand what it says until you have a claim. Then you're studying up on that insurance policy to be like, wait, what does that say again? What's my coverage? Well, we're going to talk today about what that says in the Bible so that we can fully understand it. Now, we've got two series resources. I want to encourage you to pick these up in our Salt Resource Center. We're going to show them up here on the screen. The first one is Christ the Healer by F.F. Bosworth. It's a great read that, that takes you on a journey of understanding what healing looks like in the Bible. And the second one is Healing the Sick by T.L. Osborne, a great referential, say that 17 times fast, referential resource of what the Bible says about healing. You can purchase those in salt and all the missions go to, or all the proceeds go to missions and outreach. All right, so we're going to start with the ways that God heals. And as we do this, I want to make sure we first understand that we are a three-part being. Did you know that? We're a three-part being. We are a spirit, we live in a body, and we have a soul. I want you to say that with your own mouth because then you'll remember it. Say, I am a spirit, I live in a body, and I have a soul. Commit to memory right now. Now, our soul is further broken down into three parts. Our soul is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. We're going to say that with our own words so that we can remember it. Say, my soul soul. is my mind, my will, and my emotions. Okay. So the fact that we are a three-part being, it is not hard to believe that Jesus heals us in three different ways. He heals us physically, the stuff that we're dealing with in our bodies. He heals us emotionally the stuff that we're dealing with in our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, and he heals us spiritually. Now, one of the things I often hear from people is they'll say, I'll be healed if it's God's will. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Maybe that's come out of your own mouth. Well, I want to just correct your thinking right now. It is God's will for you to be healed. You know why? Because we're about to read his will. It's the scripture, it's the Bible. You guys ready for this? It was prophesied 700 years before the birth of Jesus that he would heal us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It is his will. Let's read it. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. It says, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs. Turn to somebody and say, say griefs. And he carried our sorrows. Turn to somebody else, say sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Somebody, somebody shout transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Shout iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. That is good news, my friends. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. All right, we're going to unpack this scripture, because oftentimes we'll read the Bible in English And we're missing out what the original text in the original language was trying to convey. So we're going to go back to Hebrew. Y'all are going to get a Hebrew lesson today. Can I get an amen? Might feel a little bit like Bible lesson for a second, but that's okay because this is doctrinal. It's super important for us to understand. The scripture says Jesus heals us physically through our sickness, our disease, and our illness. Jesus was acquainted with our grief. And that word grief in the Hebrew is the word koli. And koli literally translates to sickness, disease, and illness. So it says he was acquainted with our sickness and our disease. Now, maybe you're going, wait a second. Jesus was God in the flesh. He didn't actually 
face sickness and disease because he was perfect. But the scripture says he was acquainted. I once heard somebody describe it this way. Jesus' sympathy was so intense that he could literally feel what it felt like to be sick like we were. The scripture says he's borne our griefs. That word born means carried or substituted. So he served as the substitute so we didn't have to face sickness, disease, and illness. Maybe you're facing something physically in your body today. Maybe you're struggling with chronic migraines or digestive issues. Can I just tell you right now that God wants to heal you physically through what Jesus did for you. The second way that Jesus healed was emotionally. And he did that through pain, grief, and anguish. He addressed pain, grief, and anguish. The scripture says Jesus carried our sorrows. And that word sorrows in the Hebrew is the word ka'av. And it translates to pain, grief, and anguish, both physically and emotionally. Because we can have physical pain, right? Anybody ever stepped on a Lego? I don't think there's words to describe that kind of pain. Like, that hurts to the core. That's a physical pain. But how about an emotional pain? When you lose someone you love or when you experience a betrayal, like, that is a deep emotional pain. That word ka'av in the scripture is referring to both. Now, the first time it was mentioned in scripture, it was referencing physical pain. And it was used to describe the pain that a man would experience after circumcision. I do not profess to know what that feels like. But it's probably like stepping on a Lego. (laughs) Physical pain. The uh, the second time that word ka'av is mentioned in the scripture is in the book of Exodus. And it's describing emotional pain. God recognized that the Israelites were suffering in anguish because they were in slavery by the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They were experiencing abuse and anguish emotionally. Jesus wants to heal you emotionally today. Maybe you're struggling with anxiety. Maybe depression just won't leave. Jesus wants to heal you of that today. The third way that Jesus heals us is spiritually. And when he heals us spiritually, he addresses our transgressions and our iniquities. Now, the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. And that word transgressions is pesha in the Hebrew. It means rebellion or breach of trust. Because every single one of us is rebellious Every single one of us has fallen short. Every single one of us has missed the mark. And that word transgression, if you think about it practically, it literally means the act of sinning. So when you tell a lie, you're transgressing. When you betray somebody, you are transgressing. When you commit murder, you are transgressing. It's a transgression. Jesus also addressed our iniquity. It says he was bruised. For our iniquities, it's the word avon in the Hebrew, and it means blame or guilt. It's that dirty feeling that we get on the inside after we've transgressed. So if transgression is the literal act of sinning, then iniquity is the feeling that we get as a result. The shame, the guilt. One way that I remember iniquity versus transgression is it says he was bruised. For our iniquity, well, what is a bruise? It's internal bleeding, right? It's bleeding beneath the surface. So our iniquity is the stuff that we feel beneath the surface. Y'all staying with me? Okay. All right. One more Hebrew word, and that is rafa. Rafa, it means healed. Healed completely and repaired. The scripture says, by his stripes, we are healed. Healed, repaired, totally, completely healed by his stripes. 
Maybe you're in here and you're unfamiliar with that term. Let me explain it to you. It says by his stripes. Because in the old days, in the Bible times, that was a form of punishment that they would use. It was whipping with a whip called a cat of nine tails. It was a whip that had straps of leather that were embedded with shards of bone and broken pottery. And they would whip someone and this bone and pottery would literally tear the flesh away from someone's bone. Totally gruesome, absolutely grotesque. In fact, they would say that people who experienced this form of punishment were oftentimes rendered unrecognizable on the other side. The scripture even says Jesus was unrecognizable. Why am I talking about this? I think it's really important that we understand that Jesus suffered this for you and for me so that we didn't have to. He literally bore those stripes to heal us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. He said, you don't have to carry it anymore. I already paid that price. Now, maybe you're in here going, okay, that's great. That was when Jesus walked the earth, but last time I checked, he's not here. Well, that's not true. In fact, Jesus said to his disciples, before he went to the cross, he knew what was going to happen, right? He knew he was going to die on the cross. He knew he was going to descend into the pit of hell, take back the keys, ascend into heaven, reveal himself again to the disciples. He knew all of that was going to happen. And before he did, he went to them in John chapter 14, verse 12, and he said, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do. Those are red letter words. The scripture said Jesus with his own mouth said, you will do greater than I did. Healing, done. Opening blind eyes, done. Healing the sick, done. Calling the paralytics to walk again, done. He said, you will do it too and even greater. Church, do we believe that today? He said, just because I'm going away, he said, I've got to go to the Father. But whatever you ask for in my name, this I will do. The Father will be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Healing is absolutely accessible to us today. And God operates. He's the healer, but he works through us to heal. Now, he uses several methods. We've already talked about the ways, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. But he uses several different methods to heal that I want to unpack for us so that we understand how he works. I liken it to a pitcher in baseball. A pitcher has a repertoire of pitches, don't they? Fastball, curveball, slider, change up. What am I missing? Knuckleball. So a pitcher uses different pitches, very like the way that God uses different methods to heal. So we're going to talk about a comprehensive list, by no means exclusive, but a comprehensive list of the ways that God heals. The first one I want to talk about is physical touch and laying on of hands. The physical touch and laying on of hands. In Luke chapter four, verse 40, it says, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus and he laid hands on every single one of them and healed them. Now, I just wanna pause for a minute because when I read this, the Lord was impressing upon me the intimacy of this act. Jesus literally was brought probably hundreds of people in crowds and droves, but he would lay hands on every single one of them, a very intimate act. He probably looked them in the eyes when he did this. He probably called them by name, and he modeled it for his disciples. He was showing them what to do, because then he says in Mark chapter 16, y'all know this, it's the Great Commission. If you're not familiar, he says, go and make disciples of the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he says in verse 18, he says, they, in other words, believers, will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. 
He says, do as I do. I modeled it for you. Now you do it. After he's reminded us that we're going to have the same authority or we have the same authority that raised him from the dead. Last year, I was at the chiropractor. And I'm laying on the table about to get adjusted. It's the best feeling in the world. You're like, yes, I'm about to feel amazing. And my chiropractor also loves Jesus. She comes in and she says, Pastor D, there's a woman in the next room who needs some prayer. Would you be willing to pray over, pray over her? And I said, absolutely. Go into the room and I see her. She's like 20 something. She's laying on the table and she's like, her skin is discolored. She's feeble, frail, maybe 80 pounds. I mean, just totally struggling. And so I introduced my, myself. She told me her name was Hannah. And I knelt down beside her and I said, Hannah, would you like to be healed today? And she whispered desperately. I said, okay, we're going to lay hands on you. And we're going to believe that God is going to heal you. But before we do, I want to make sure you know who the healer is. I said, do you know Jesus? She said, I've heard of him. And so I started to tell her what Jesus did on the cross for her over 2,000 years ago, that he paid the price, that he bore stripes so that she could be totally and completely healed. And I said, Hannah, do you believe that today? And she said, yes, I do. I said, great, let's start praying. So her husband and I laid hands on her, and we declared radical healing. She walked out of that office that day full of joy. A joy that her husband said she hadn't seen in years. God will use the laying on of hands as a method in which he heals. He uses our hands, natural hands, with a supernatural God. Natural hands, nothing special about my hands. Put your hands in the air and go like this. Y'all all have them here. Hands, natural hands, met with a supernatural God, and healing takes place Why? Because of faith. Another method of healing is instantaneously. Instantaneously. In Matthew chapter 8, there's a centurion who was a military leader. And his servant had fallen sick to the point of death. He calls for Jesus to come. Jesus is like, I'm on my way. And then the centurion says, you know what? I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. And I love it because the scripture says that Jesus marveled at his faith. I don't know about you, but I want to have faith that makes all of heaven marvel. I want to have the kind of faith that stops Jesus in his tracks like the centurion. And then Jesus responds to him in verse 13. He says, go, let it be done just as you believed. And his servant was healed at that very moment. Healed instantly. Sometimes God heals instantly. Sometimes it's a process of time. You know, Hannah, we prayed over her that day, and I believe God healed her that moment. But she called me two months later and said, my symptoms are totally and completely gone. And she said, Jesus healed me. Isn't he good? He's so good. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it's a process of time. Another method God uses is anointing with oil. James chapter 5, verse 14, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Let's unpack what this scripture says because there's a ton of answered questions just in this one scripture. First of all, it says, is anyone among you sick? Does that say only some of you? Does that say only a few of you? It says anyone. Last time I checked, that word anyone means anyone. Healing is for anyone. The scripture also says, let them call the elders of the church. What is elders? It's the leaders. You call the leaders of the church. Why is it saying this? Because I believe with leaders, there's a maturity of faith. 
When you go to a leader, you know you're going to be met with faith to stand with you in agreement for the healing that you're believing for. Where are my leaders at here? Raise your hands. Come on, leaders. Raise them high. Come on. Look around the room. These are the leaders of Freedom House Church. These leaders are operating in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you need healing, come alongside of them. Let's do something radical like the scripture says. Why oil? Well, it's a natural practice, a physical act that's expressing a spiritual truth. Again, is there anything special or miraculous about the oil itself? No. But it's an act that's done in faith with a spiritual truth for God to show up like he does. Last year, we got a call from one of our friends at South End. And she said, listen, I just went to the doctor for my standard colonoscopy. Nobody likes to do that. And she's like, I got some bad news. They told me there's a tumor. And they said that this tumor, from their experience, is almost always cancerous. And they're starting to plan surgery. And they want to talk about potential radiation and chemotherapy. And so I said, nope, we'll be right there. So we grabbed our anointing oil, hopped in the car, and we laid hands on her, anointed her with oil, and we declared healing. Now, we were praying for like 30 minutes, and in the middle, she's like, okay, I'm healed. And we're like, okay, you're healed. And so she calls the doctor and is like, hey, so I'm not going to need that follow-up appointment. Don't worry about the surgery. Like, I'm radically healed. And they're like, um, yeah. So we're going to need you to verify that. (laughs) How about you just come back in and we'll just run these scans one more time just to be sure. So she goes back in and they run the scans and not an ounce of that tumor was even remaining on the scans in Jesus' name. Amazing. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you've been radically, miraculously healed. And she's like, duh, I told you that. That is another way that God heals, is anointing with oil. Another method is speaking or with prayer. In Luke chapter 4, verse 38, it says, Now Jesus arose from the synagogue. He entered Simon's house. But Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever, and they made request of Jesus concerning her. So he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever. Be gone, fever. Man. Man. Powerful, right? Because it says it left her. It left. Jesus spoke to the fever. It left. And then it says immediately she rose and started to serve them. Now, hold on a second. Didn't we just hear that Jesus said we would do even greater things than he did? So I don't know about you, but this kind of got me going like, dang, why as believers are we not walking around going, chronic migraines gone in Jesus' name? Why are we not walking around operating with the same authority of the Holy Spirit that resides inside of us? The same power that rose Jesus from the dead on the inside of us. We have that same authority. Jesus is at the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he tells a man to stand up. The man has a shriveled hand, a deformation of some sorts, and it's likely been like that all of his life. Jesus calls him to stand up in front of everybody, the synagogue leaders, the Pharisees, the naysayers, the haters. And Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 10, He looks around at all of them, and he says to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man does so, and it says his hand was completely restored. Amazing physical healing. But I have to believe that the reason Jesus had him stand up was not just so all could witness this radical physical healing, but I think Jesus was personally addressing this man and his emotional anguish. 
Can you imagine having a deformed hand? He probably spent most of his life isolated as an outcast, disregarded. And Jesus in that moment is restoring him emotionally as well. He's saying, you're worthy. I designed you. I have a plan for you. He heals him physically, but also also emotionally. Another method that God heals is by faith yours, but also theirs. There's a story where a woman was suffering with a blood issue for 12 years. It's a long time. 12 years she struggled, and she hears that this man, Jesus, is coming to town. And she rises up with a faith to believe that just touching the hem of Jesus' garment would heal her. She fights through the crowd. She grabs just the hem of his garment, and then he turns around and says to her, take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed in that moment. Faith is what healed her. In another case, there was a paralytic man whose friends were like, oh, uh uh-uh, we're not going to leave you this way. They put him on a mat, carried him to Jesus, who was preaching at someone's house. They couldn't get in because it was so thick with people that they climb up on the roof. Because they're like, we're not going to just wait for the door to open up. They climbed up on the roof, tore a hole in the roof, and lowered this man to Jesus' feet. And Jesus says in verse 20 of chapter 5 of Luke, it says, when Jesus saw their faith, He said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Your sins? I'm sorry. The man can't walk. Jesus, why are you addressing his sins? Well, remember, Jesus heals us spiritually too. He was like, I don't want you to walk with that iniquity or that transgression anymore. I've wiped your slate clean. Come on. And that's what he says to us. So he addressed him spiritually first. And then what did he say? He said, now take up your mat and go home. And the man walked. Different methods that that God will use through Jesus to heal us. The last one I want to talk through is the process of time. I want to unpack this one just a little bit more. Because I think it's really easy for us to go, oh, yeah, lay hands on me. That's cool. Yeah, if I get healing, yeah, lay hands on me. Or, or oil, pour it all over. Like, do what you got to do. If I'm going to get my healing, sure, pour oil. We want our instant healing. We want that, that instantaneous, like the Amazon order that shows up in two days, right? We want it to show up on our watch, on our timeline. And God is going, I'm doing something, but do you trust me? Sometimes it's a process of time. Sometimes God is working out something on the inside of us that's not evident on the outside. But he's saying, do you trust me? Do you have faith to believe that I'll heal? There was a man in the Old Testament by the name of Naaman. He was a renowned military leader. He was beloved, well-respected. But he had leprosy. I feel like sometimes that's a lot of us. We're great at our jobs, we're successful, and then there's a but. Maybe it's not leprosy, but maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's something that we're dealing with behind the scenes that nobody knows about. And Naaman hears that the prophet Elisha can help him heal. Because in the Old Testament, God would work through the prophets to speak to the people. So what does Naaman do? He packs up a procession, chariots and horses and gold and silver. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go to this man of God and I'm going to get my healing. Now I translate this to modern day and I can imagine he's got his posse, his friends, everybody around him. And he's like, oh, this is going to be a show. And he gets to where Elisha, the man of God, is. And Elisha's like, dude, you're missing it. And Elisha doesn't even leave the house. He sends a messenger. He's like, hey, go tell this guy Naaman, like, dip in the Jordan River seven times. You'll get your healing. 
And when the messenger went to Naaman, he was furious, enraged. He was angry. Why was he angry? Because it wasn't happening the way that he believed it should. Come on. I know there have been times in my life where I believed that God was going to show up in a certain way. And when he didn't, there was a disappointment. There was a, a, an anger on the inside of me going, God, where are you? I thought you were going to show up. But Naaman was also dealing with some pride. Remember, he showed up with a procession. He brought gold and silver like he was going to buy his way into healing. And, and, and Elisha's like, uh-uh, it's not going to work that way. So Naaman is met by one of his servants who's like, um, hey, I, I get that you're frustrated. But if the man of God had asked you to do something really profound, would you not have done that? How much easier if he's just calling you to dip in some river, come on, like your healing's on the other side. And Naaman's like, okay, fine. Or that's how I imagine he was. He realizes that people are watching. And he's a leader, so he's probably like, fine, I'll dip in this dirty water. And he steps into the river, and here he's going, man, so many other rivers I could have dunked in. Cleaner ones, at least. This one's filthy. And he dips down. You can imagine with his face all wrangled in frustration and doubt. This isn't happening the way I believed it would and he dips down that first time and maybe he's starting to wrestle with you know I really thought this was going to be something radical because I am someone special and he dips a second time and he dips a third time and he dips a fourth time and I have to believe that in this process God was doing a work on him going you know what you're nothing without me and if you'll just trust me, I've got something really profound for you. And it's going to blow your mind. It'll be even greater than just your physical healing. So he dips again and he dips again. And on the seventh time, I believe his heart had had a radical shift to where he's gone, okay, God, if you are who you say you are, then I believe that you can heal not just my gnarly flesh, but this pride that's gripped my heart on the inside and Naaman comes up that seventh time out of the water and he looks at his hand and his flesh has been totally and completely restored to the point where his flesh looked like that of a child's totally and completely healed over a process of time maybe you're in that season right now where you've already received the laying on of hands. Maybe somebody's already anointed you, but you're still seeking what God is saying that he's already done for you. He's saying, I've already healed you, but will you believe the healer? Why does God use different methods of healing? Well, I believe it's so that we're not fixated on the method, but that we're fixated on the healer himself. God wants to heal you today. He wants to show up in a radical way for what you've been struggling with physically, emotionally, spiritually. He's stirring. But do you have the faith to see him move? I heard once that a farmer doesn't go out to an empty field and go, God, show up with a crop. No, what does he do? He goes and he plants seed. In faith, it's an act of saying, no, God, I'm putting this seed in the ground, and I believe that I'm going to reap a mighty harvest because of what you've done, because of who you are. Church, are we a ground that's fertile to receive what God is wanting to do today? Stand up on your feet. I believe that God wants to heal today. 
But do we have a presence of faith? I wanna just challenge you right now, whatever it takes you to do, whether you've gotta physically turn on your faith, whether you gotta kick yourself in the butt spiritually, do it right now. Come on, Jesus wants to do something in you. He doesn't want you to stay where you are. He doesn't want you to struggle with your physical stuff anymore. He doesn't want you to struggle with your spiritual anymore. He wants to heal. Church, are you ready to receive it? Just put your hands up right now, right where you are in faith to receive it. And I want you to say with your own words, say, I receive it in faith. I receive it in faith. If you're dealing with anything right now, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, I'm going to challenge you to take another step forward. I want you to come out of your seat and come down front. If you believe that God is the healer, if you believe that he's capable, if you believe that he still does miracles today, step out of your seat. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Get out of your seat. Come down. Come down. Come on. Come on. Come on. You've got a friend who needs healing. Grab their arm and bring them to the feet of Jesus like the friends did with the paralytic. Come on, come on down, come on down. Come on, come on, come on. Now I want you guys to look at me for a second. Look at me, look at me. What we are gonna do right now is we're gonna receive healing like the Bible says. But first, I wanna make sure you understand you know where the healing comes from. The healing comes from God. When he sent Jesus to the cross, he did so to pay the price so that you didn't have to bear that. Do you believe that Jesus did that for you? Do you believe that Jesus did that for you? Okay, now stretch out your hands right now in faith. And we're gonna believe, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for healing in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now that you would radically touch bodies in the way that only you can. Spinal issues corrected in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare scoliosis gone in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for radical straightening of the spine in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Leaders, get out of your seat and come surround these people. Let's do what the Bible says. Father, I thank you right now for healing in the name of Jesus. I rebuke infertility in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare ligament issues healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever is stricken in bodies right now, I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for healing over migraines in the name of Jesus. Headaches that are inexplicable by doctors. Father, I declare healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Emotional pain. Father, we give it to you. 
receive Jesus, not only as your healer, but as your Lord and Savior. And can I tell you, today is not the kind of day you wanna be living in without Jesus as the Lord of your life. So if you're in here today and you wanna commit your life to him for the first time or the hundredth time, I wanna give you that opportunity right now. He's got a plan for you, but you've been doing life without him and he's saying, bring me along. I wanna lead you. If that's you right now, would you just place your hand right on your heart? If you believe that Jesus is your savior, you wanna receive him, put your hand right on your heart right now. I wanna just lead you in a prayer. I'm not gonna make you do anything crazy, don't you worry, but I want you to put your hand on your heart as an act of faith to say God I'm doing this I see your hands thank you Lord and church we're going to join with them right now and we're going to confess with our mouth like the Bible says just repeat after me everybody join in say heavenly father thank you for sending Jesus to die for me I believe he died I believe he rose again and I believe that he is my Lord and Savior. And from this point forward, I will follow him all the days of my life. And let's give a big resounding amen in Jesus' name. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, I might get a little passionate up here every now and then, but it's because of the faith in the room and the healing power of Jesus that I get passionate. I see a husband and wife holding hands, marriages come together, finances restored healing in your heart, healing in your mind, healing physically. All you can do is give thanks to God. We live in a broken world. He's our only hope. And I'm so proud of each and every one of you that came up here today. And just said, you know what, God, I need a touch from you. I'm giving it to you. I'm done carrying it on my own yours. And now his healing power is here for each and every one of you. I feel like there's someone online too. This is for you as well. You can receive his healing. You might be in a different room in a different space right now, but Jesus is omnipresent. He can touch you right where you are in your own living room or hotel room or wherever you are. Receive that from him right now today. Freedom House, we have some next steps for you. If you just received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your next step is baptism. And good news for you, it is next week at Freedom House. That is a believer's first step is to go down saying, you know what, I don't want this old life anymore. I'm going to live in the new life that Jesus has given me. You're going to come up out of that water and you are declaring that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and that you're going to follow him the rest of your life, and as a result, your healing's in process. It's in process. You know, for those who've walked away from Jesus for some time, and maybe you're back, and you want to make a commitment, a new commitment, you want to say, you know what, I'm putting a stake in the ground. I am declaring that I am going to stay committed to Jesus, and so I'm going to get baptized next week as well, because I'm making a recommitment to follow Jesus. You can do that too. So make sure you sign up at freedomhouse.cc slash baptism. And if you are a first-time guest with us or you just put your hand on your heart to receive Jesus, stop at Guest Central on your way out to pick up some free resources we have for you. You want to close this out? Yep. I just want to pray real quick. Let's pray and we can, we can go home. Heavenly Father, thank you for moving today, God. Thank you for moving across your people, God. Your, your Holy Spirit healing power has move today miraculously thank you for your presence in our lives thank you that we don't just leave it here but we're able to carry it with us wherever we go because holy spirit you live inside us so not only do we want to receive but now we want to be the giving life to other people god and let us use our testimony to tell people about you so heavenly father we thank you 
that when we go out of here today, we're carrying with us the hope of Jesus, the hope of healing, the hope of eternity with you, God. We carry the joy that only comes from you, and we thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Freedom House, you guys are dismissed. Have a great week.